Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. Today with us we have the gorgeous model Akisha McBride and on her I created this pretty dramatic look. We went in today on the contour and the highlight and I created this really dramatic bold feline eyeliner look that I hope you guys will like. So if you want to learn how I created this look right here then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Rose Deep Hydration Oil Infused Serum from Fresh Beauty to prep our model skin, and I'm applying this with a makeup wedge. The serum is great because a little goes a long way, and if you give the skin a few minutes to soak up the product before applying the foundation, that's best because it'll leave the skin just moisturized enough, but without making it too slippery from the oils in the serum. Once I have that applied, I'm going to move on to foundation. I'm using a cream foundation from RCMA, and this is in the shade Shinto 8. This is one of my top favorite foundations to work with. I've used it for years. It's so easy to work with. It looks beautiful on everyone, and it never disappoints. I'm applying this onto Acacia's face using a beauty blender and applying this everywhere, including up onto the ears, under the jawline, beneath the chin, and down the neck. This will just assure that everything is seamless and matching. I know some of you ask what brand of beauty blender I use. I'll link it down below, but it's, it's by the actual brand beauty blender, <laughs> and I use it damp. I don't use it dry. Next, with the Overachiever Concealer from Huda Beauty in the shade Chocolate Chip, I'm gonna use this as our contour. So I'm applying this below the cheekbones, uh, the perimeter of the forehead and face, and down the sides of the nose before blending it out with a beauty blender. As you know by now, it does take me a minute to blend this out, so I've included some of that footage for those of you who enjoy watching it. Alrighty, so now that we have most of that contour blended out, it's time to move on to the highlighting. I'm using another Overachiever Concealer from Huda Beauty, this time in the shade of Peanut Butter, and I'm placing this right underneath the eyes before blending it up and out with my Beauty Blender. You'll also see me using a small amount of this concealer on the center of the forehead and down the center of the nose here in just a second. Okay, believe it or not, in real time, most of the work here is done at this point, or at least most of the time-consuming work, such as the placement and the blending. Now that we have everything blended out, though, we have to move on and set it with powder. For powder, I'm using the Loose Setting Powder from Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Deep Peach, and I'm placing a good amount of this underneath the eyes, where we placed that concealer. I don't know why this powder is looking uh, more yellow on camera, because it is more of a peach in real life. It 
it, it might just be the lighting or something. I'm not filming with my usual lighting today, so maybe it just looks a little off to me, but it, it is a beautiful powder that you've seen me use several times on my channel before, especially for baking. I'm choosing to bake a few different parts today of Acacia's face. I've read some comments lately wanting me to do heavier glam again, and I promise, it's not that I don't want to. You all know how I love a full glam. I'm just trying to switch it up as much as possible for y'all. If I don't use enough makeup, someone's complaining that I didn't teach enough in the tutorial, or if I use too much makeup, someone's complaining that I use too much because the model is already a natural beauty and she doesn't need makeup. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always something. I'm, I'm just trying to make everyone happy here. So today, we're going a little heavier with the glam. Now with the excess powder left in the powder puff, I'm setting the rest of the areas of the face. And as you can see, it's barely noticeable compared to the areas we had baked. I don't want the perimeter of the face to be overly matte or set with powder. I want a little bit of the shine from the skin and the foundation and products we used to peek through. Now that we have the skin done, let's move on to eyebrows. To fill them in, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Definer in the shade Medium Brown, and I'm ever so slightly running this through the brow hairs. Acacia has beautiful brows as is, so I don't need much of this pencil, just enough to shape the brow and fill in any sparse areas. For extra detail, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Pen, also in the shade Medium Brown, to draw on individual brow hairs. I know this step is a little, <laughs> a little extra, and it may seem unnecessary, but it does make the biggest difference, especially when seeing the makeup up close and personal. And with the tinted brow gel in the shade Soft Brown, I'm running this through the brow hairs to lock them into place. It also gives it a nice tint of color to cover up any foundation that may have found its way there. Now, with this black AMC eyeliner from Inglot, I'm going to begin creating this eye makeup look. As I said in the intro, I'm going for a pretty dramatic feline cat eye look. So it's important to me that I keep it simple enough to achieve so that any girl or boy watching this at home can do it on themselves easily. So with a liner brush, I'm running this gel liner through the waterline, starting from the inner corner and working my way on out to the outer corner. Then I'll run this along the upper lash line. A lot of you guys know already, precise eyeliner is not my strong suit, so it does take me a lot of back and forth to get this right. Taking a step back, assessing the situation, and then perfecting whatever I need to get the shape that I want. For this look in particular, it's crucial to really extend that inner corner to get that feline cat eye look. All the drama with this makeup application is in the eye makeup. I didn't go too dramatic with anything else. I kept the brows simple. I didn't cake on blush. The lip will be nude and I'm not even going in with a heavy lash. The eyeliner is the star of this show. So don't be afraid to get dramatic with it. Here, as you see, I'm just using a small detail eyeshadow brush to diffuse out the eyeliner on the upper lid's outer half. And I'm doing this with the smallest amount of black eyeshadow. I'm using these wispy synthetic lashes to add some length to our model's natural lashes. I get these lashes from a store called Namie's here in Los Angeles, but they're very similar to Ardell's wispy lashes. While I wait for this lash glue to dry, I'm using Ofra's highlighter in the shade Soho to add some glow back to our model's skin. I'm brushing this on with an eyeshadow brush to the areas of the face I want to add a bit of shine to, and then diffusing out any areas that I need to with my fingers. I love a look like this because even though I'd consider this to be a heavier, more dramatic glam, there is a simplicity factor about it as well that makes it timeless and elegant. Had I gone in any heavier with a lash, I feel like it would just be too much. But then again, you can customize this to make it your own. Just because I'm doing things a certain way doesn't mean you have to do it that way too. If you want to go in for a heavier look, pack on more makeup than I do. If you don't like this heavy of a look, then don't use as much makeup as I do. You know what I mean? None of this is intended to 
be taken so literally. If you only find a thing or two from my techniques that inspire you in your makeup routine, then my mission here is accomplished. So anyways, as you saw, after I applied the highlighter and waited for the lash glue to dry, I went in with my Kevin Aquan Lash Curler to curl the lashes. And now I'm using the Legit Lashes Mascara from Huda Beauty to really unify her natural lashes in with the strip lashes we used. Once we have that mascara applied, I'm still able to see a bit of that residue from the lash glue I used. So I'm just taking any kind of ink liner I have laying around to run across the lash band and to cover that glue up. Moving on to the lips, I'm using this lip liner from MAC in the shade Chestnut to line the border of Acacia's lips. I love this liner, especially for deeper skin tones. It's the perfect brown tone to create a beautiful nude lip. And while I do focus this towards the edges of the lips, I will blend it inwards just a tad bit, but keeping the center bare for the lipstick we'll be using next. The lipstick I'm using today is from Urban Decay in the shade Heartless, and it's this pinky rose shade that's very close to her natural lip color, and I'm placing this right in the center of her bottom lip. To add some shine to the lips, I'm using this lip gloss from Fent <laughs> Gosh, from Fenty Beauty in the shade Cake Shake. I first used this gloss in a look I created a few videos back, and I've been hooked ever since. It's a stunning nude bronze color that has the perfect amount of golden reflex in it. And finally, for the very last step of this look, I'm using the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to set the makeup and to lock it into place. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we transformed our naturally gorgeous model into a pageant queen. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.